So, by the way, I'm gone these two days for my students. So what I do? Lesson plans. Drop dry ice and water, have students observe. No, I'm just teasing. But really, <laughs> that's amazing. There's just so much going on there. Why do they call it dry ice? Well, there's this whole thing about it not melting, but you know what? Maybe they call it dry ice because when you put it in water, it doesn't get wet. I would argue that dry ice has not even come in contact with the water yet. It's got this envelope of subliming gas all around it, protecting it or keeping it from, and it isn't very good heat transfer. That is not cooling down that water nearly as much as the same size block of regular ice, which is nowhere near as cold. But the real thing I wanted to point out here is, what happens if you add a little bit of dawn to your bubbling? Yeah, maybe it just never dawned and you tried. <laughs> Now that's neat, but what's even neater is this. And you won't be able to see this, but I'm telling you, if you do this and you look at those suds carefully enough, they do something rather unusual. They shrink. They're not popping. They're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That's because carbon dioxide is so soluble in water, that's what you know, soda is all about, right? That it's dissolving into the soapy water film and then dissolving out the other side or I guess effervescing out the other side, and so their bubbles are getting smaller. You see, you don't ever see, you see bubbles pop, but how often do you see a bubble shrink? Okay? So these bubbles getting smaller and smaller. Keep that in mind as I do this next demonstration. And this is one, oh, oh gosh. I'm trying to think. David Brooks from, Univer from University of Nebraska Lincoln, and I did workshops at Sacred Heart University in Connecticut years ago. And, kind of just came up with this back in like the late 80s. And it's, uh, it's so simple. <laughs> so I've got a bucket about eh, half filled, a little less than half filled with water. I put in a nice block or two. Oh, this is this one here, the crystal ball. Paper towel soaked in some soapy water. Gonna wet the rim here first. Trying to get much of the soapy water into there because then you just have this all over the place. Not bad, but and I'm just gonna draw it across the top here and let the fun begin. Kind of looks like that, hey? What's rather amazing about this is soap films usually pop because they dry out. But this one's being constantly moistened from beneath by that mist. That mist, remember, is, is, is H2O, little droplets of H2O. Isn't that fun? Oh. So hit the lights. And I've got a little lantern flashlight here. That's a floating flashlight because, you know, you drop it out of the canoe, it's got to float there, okay? That's pretty close to what I've got up there on the screen, isn't it? Mmm, <laughs> let me look into your future. But she can't do this, right? Lights back up. So what the heck is going to be the tie on this one? To teach a child, sometimes it helps to act like a child. <laughs> I like having my kids just see my kid's side, my students see my kid's side, because that's what I am. That's who I am. You can't be a phony in front of the students. They'll know it. Children are always the only future the human race has. Teach them well. And I've got some, a couple more demos here that follow along that theme. I'll just leave this one going because it looks so dramatic here next to my shrinking suds demo. This is like a little trilogy of dry ice demos, this being the third in the trilogy. Oh, the way this thing, this is what came up with this, the way this thing starts to spill over got me thinking, what if I tip this 
and had it spill over and like drips of it falling out. Well, that didn't work, but this is where I came up with that idea, okay? Just one piece there. I don't want too fast a production of gas. So in case you're wondering about this setup, this is, these are two different soda bottles here. One that I cut off high and one I cut off a little low, and now they nestle inside each other to get a good snug fit, like that. And you'll see when I do that, you get a nice little mist coming out there, OK? But you know what, maybe I'm going to put one more in there. This time, I'm going to put a soap film across the top up here. Oh, wait, that's the, uh, no, that's one I use for the magnesium. This will be better. OK, I think I got one across there. Let's find out. Yep, now that's the air that was in the tube. Now watch this first part that comes through. There's the CO2. Look how dense it is, weighing that bubble down. Boom. That was half air, half CO2. This one's pure CO2, a little bit of moisture in there. Look how much faster it falls. OK, so here's my CO2 leaky faucet. Are they bouncing on the front there? Yeah. If you get a t-shirt, or maybe this fabric. I forgot to bring a t-shirt, but let's see if I can bounce one on here. Come on. Oh, nope. Come on. If you try catching it, by the way, it'll pop in a dry hand. But if you wet your hand first, you can sometimes uh, catch it. Oh, if you do catch it, you can then watch it shrink very obviously down to nothing. No, we're down to almost nothing. OK? Too much fun, right? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. You're in for another treat here.